aero wheels are faster on the flats and lightweight wheels are faster on the climbs. That is the accepted wisdom. But what exactly are the differences in the real world for a normal rider like me? Does rotating weight actually matter on climbs? Are aero wheels actually worth it? In this video, I'm going to show you the differences based on our own real world testing performed at an outdoor velodrome and on a top secret climb in South Wales. Now I've long said that you can feel the difference that aero wheels make and that lightweight wheels don't really make much difference even on climbs. But this is the first time that I've actually put it to the test in a controlled manner. Will I be proved right or will I be proved wrong? Stick around to the end of the video to find out. But before we go any further, why not subscribe to our wonderful channel if you haven't already? To help us answer these vital questions, our sponsors for this video, Hunt, has kindly loaned us two sets of very fancy wheels. We have the 60 Limitless Aero Disc and the 32 Aerodynamicist UD Carbon Spoke Disc. The Aero Optimized 60 Limitless wheels use a highly progressive, ultra wide design with a 60 mm deep and 34 mm wide rim. The claimed weight for this wheel set is 1,669 grams. Now that's not bad for an aero wheel set, but it certainly isn't ultra light. The 32 Aerodynamicist UD carbon spoke disc wheels, on the other hand, are designed to be as light as possible. They use a shallow hookless carbon rim, which measures 32 millimeters deep and 25 millimeters wide. They also have carbon fiber spokes, which are said to be both lighter and stiffer than conventional steel spokes. All in, the lightweight wheels are claimed to weigh 1,213 grams, around 450 grams lighter than the aero wheels. Both wheel sets are set up tubeless with 25C Shulby Pro 1 TLE tires and with the same disc brake rotors and cassettes to keep the test as fair as possible. On the flat, the main forces slowing you down are rolling resistance and aerodynamic drag. It stands to reason then that with the same tyres, aero wheels ought to be faster than lightweight wheels. But with many brands performing their aerodynamic testing at speeds which are arguably realistic only to professional riders, do those effects still benefit normal riders like myself? We've come to Mainly Velodrome in South Wales, where I'm going to ride a series of back-to-back -back laps on each wheel set at a target average power and note the difference in speed between each wheel set. As always with these types of tests, I'm going to monitor and attempt to control as many variables as possible so any differences we do see can be attributed solely to the wheels. And with that out of the way, let's get my kit together and get riding. So I've done all of my laps, what did we find? Well, the difference between the two wheel sets seems to be around half a second per lap. Of course, there are some environmental variables here in the real world, and I'm not a robot capable of riding at a precisely set power output over every single lap, but I did four sets of laps on each wheel set over a number of hours, and the trend was fairly consistent. At this point though, you might be thinking, half a second per lap, is that it? Well, yes and no. A lap here at Mandy Velodrome is around 460 metres long, depending on which line you take. Given that, we can say you're roughly gaining around a second per kilometre. Now, extrapolating that out, we get a difference of around 40 seconds over 40 kilometres or 25 miles, which suddenly seems like a much bigger gap. So, yes, aero wheels are measurably faster on the flat. The key takeaway though is that what initially seems like a small difference can add up to a significant gain over time. But what about in the hills? Lightweight wheels might be slower on a completely flat course, but surely lightweight wheels are faster when you're climbing. Fortunately, there are plenty of good hills here in South Wales, so let's head off and find out. 
Now we're here at the summit of our top secret climb in beautiful South Wales. The climb itself is 1.8 kilometres long. It has an average gradient of around 11%, but it maxes out at nearly 14%. In fact, I've just done a practice run of it to work out the best line to ride and make sure we're good to start testing. And I have to say, I've chosen a bit of a brute. Now, like I did at the velodrome, I'm going to do a series of back-to-back -back runs on each wheel set, riding at a target average power and controlling as many of the variables as possible to see if we can reveal any differences in climbing speed between each wheel set. As we saw earlier, aero wheels might be faster on the flats, but with a 450 gram weight advantage, surely the lightweight wheels will be faster on the climb. Let's find out. Okay, so I've completed my runs, loaded all the data into the spreadsheet, crunched all the numbers, put it into a graph. Before I tell you the results, I will confess I actually ended up doing only one run on each wheel set as the climb was far, far harder than I expected it to be. But having said that, I'm still very confident in the results as I rode each run very consistently and I'm pretty happy with where things stand. So. The results show that on this climb, the lightweight wheels were faster than the aero wheels by 8 seconds, which is around 4 seconds per kilometre. So again, only a relatively small saving. Of course, as with the velodrome testing, if we extrapolate that small time saving to a longer climb of a similar profile, then we're potentially looking at an even bigger time gap. So, what did we learn? Well, aero wheels are indeed faster on the flat than lightweight wheels, and lightweight wheels are faster than aero wheels on steep climbs. To put some numbers on it, my testing showed that aero wheels were around one second per kilometer faster than the lightweight wheels on the flat, while the lightweight wheels were around four seconds faster per kilometer on the climb. Now, it is worth bearing in mind that these tests were performed in the real world, and there will always be variables that are beyond our control. Because of that, if you repeated these tests yourselves, you might not get the exact same figures, but we're pretty confident these results stand up and hopefully they're a little bit more relevant than wind tunnel tests performed by professional riders at 45 kilometers an hour. So, which type of wheel set is best for you? Well, in truth, the answer to that is complicated. If you live somewhere like the UK where we don't have many super long steep climbs, then you're almost certainly going to be faster with an aero wheel set. You might give up a few seconds on the climbs, but as you'll be spending most of your time on relatively flat or rolling terrain, you'll probably have more to gain from an aero wheel set. That said, if you live somewhere mountainous or you're interested in chasing the fastest climb times possible or being the first of your friends up every single hill, then a lightweight wheel set might be the better choice. There's also handling to consider as well, and while these Hunt 60 Limitless wheels handle exceptionally well for a wheel set with such deep rims, there's no denying that the lightweight wheels handle even better on windy days. While the aero wheels might theoretically be faster everywhere except the climbs, if you're having to ride more carefully because you're worried about sudden gusts of wind, then you might not see all of the benefits, especially on long and technical descents. Let me know what your local rides are like and which wheel set would suit you best in the comments below. A huge thanks to our sponsor Hunt for helping us make this video happen and supplying us with these two wonderful sets of wheels. Can I keep them? <laughs> and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and for more incredible content, hit the little bell icon so every time we upload a new video, you'll get a notification. Bye!